This is a stock market bloodbath. We were expecting a black swan, we got a game changer. The US stock market has now lost 27% of its value in just two weeks. Right after Trump announced a 30-day travel ban for European flights to the US, global stocks plunged into a bear market, oil crashed, airline stocks and treasury yields plunged, and US equity futures eventually tumbled limit down. Next is a bond market crash than a currency market implosion. The Fed will soon double its repo operation and extend it indefinitely. Mass bailouts and government-backed loans are coming. It's about to get ugly. Bank runs, grocery runs, stock runs, and maybe even war. With the Saudis flooding the market with cheap oil, people starting to hibernate, major events getting cancelled, flights being cancelled, and the worldwide economic slowdown that has just begun. As people's activities slow, so does our economy. This is already starting to feel more like the end of the world than just some meltdown. This, as the number of cases here in the US, continues to increase now surpassing a thousand with more than 30 deaths, and 18 states are declaring a state of emergency. Meantime the president's national security advisor not mincing words today blaming China of an outbreak cover-up. War could be next. All the money to the banks didn't do a thing for anyone off Wall Street. How about we level the playing field and calculate the total stimulus and give a check to the people who don't work for the investment and commercial entities given access to the repo, QE, and bailout funds, all Fed members. Include everyone who has had money in the market since 2008. America's economic future looks bleaker than ever. With a $23 plus trillion dollar national debt, an expanding epidemic, skyrocketing unfunded liabilities, the end of retirement, coming corporate bankruptcies, the myth of a strong stock market, the subprime auto loan bubble, the upcoming inflation, flooding the market with treasury bonds, the day of reckoning for the Federal Reserve, and the end of the second longest economic recovery in history. While President Donald Trump and elements of the mainstream media describe this as a strong economy and calling the pandemic fake news, these politicians are totally detached from the reality of the financial system. While the real world has stalled in relation to wage growth and household debt is increasing rapidly, the political system is playing games, pretending to be naive. Or are they really that naive? And as for the oil war, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some sort of conflict erupts in the Middle East, or would that perhaps be too little, too late to save shale oil? Wall Street and the inbred investor class has made trillions of paper gains over the last decade, thanks to corrupt central banking and crony fraud. They take a hit, not even yet, retracing all those trillions they made. Yet they need bailing out again, at the taxpayer expense. Guess those brilliant captains of industry didn't put some of the gains aside for a rainy day, common lie told over and over to a population destroyed by wage suppression, and exponential rise in the cost of living. There are already talks about a liquidity crisis. A liquidity crisis refers to a credit freeze, a total lockup of the system. Transactions stop. No cash available from banks, ATMs, nothing. This happened in 2008 and will happen again. This is getting really interesting. It's like a movie, with no sign of a happy ending, history before our eyes. If this market continues to sell off tomorrow, we will again make history. This isn't going to be just a recession. This will be the greatest depression ever. Buckle up. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too, on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you. Stocks rebound off the low as the Fed announces massive quantitative easing. The Fed will pump 1.5 trillion into their newest QE. A well-oiled and devious Ponzi scheme of the first magnitude. At this point, they are doing everything to mock us. 1.5 trillion stock buys. Trump is spending more money this week than Obama did in eight years. All to protect stocks while other assets crash. Corporate debt is the bubble, and coronavirus just burst it. The stock market is crashing because of excessive debt. The virus mania is just a convenient cover for the epic Ponzi fraud unfolding. Stock markets have been getting hammered, ostensibly because of the economic impacts of the coronavirus. Peter Schiff has been saying this isn't really about the virus. It was the pin that pricked the bubble. If it wasn't coronavirus, it would have been something else. Regardless, the Fed hit the panic button last week and slashed interest rates by half a percent. 
Peter has described this as throwing gasoline on a fire. In other words, the central bank is exacerbating the problem. Peter isn't alone in thinking that the Fed is doing more harm than good. Mark Faber also warns that the coronavirus could create severe recession. In an article published on the Mises Wire, economist Daniel Lacal said the Fed's panicked response is actually making the economy worse. The Federal Reserve's monumental mistake of cutting rates this past week can only be understood in the context of the rising god complex among central planners, an overwhelming combination of ignorance and arrogance. Less than a week ago, several members of the Federal Reserve Board reiterated, rightly so, that cutting rates would not have a significant impact in a supply shock like the current one. We must also remember that the Federal Reserve already cut rates in 2019 and inflated its balance sheet by 14% to almost all-time highs in recent months, completely reversing the virtually non-existent prior normalization. Only a few days after making calls for prudence, the Fed launched an unnecessary and panic-inducing emergency rate cut and caused the opposite effect of what they desired. Instead of calming markets, the Federal Reserve's 50 basis point cut sent a message of panic to market participants. Global money supply has soared to $81 trillion, an all-time high, in the middle of the epidemic, most leading economies have cut rates and implemented zero and negative real rates. In fact, major central banks were already injecting more than $150 billion a month PBOC, ECB, Fed, etc. into a doped economy long before the coronavirus was even in the news. A supply shock is not solved with demand-side policies. Governments and central banks will generate a deflationary crisis by adding fuel to bubbles and increasing overcapacity in an already bloated economy only to create an artificial boost to GDP. With $14 trillion in negative yielding bonds and $81 trillion in global money supply, the combination of a panic-induced fall in asset prices and massively leveraged bets could generate a rapid financial shock. We must remember that the risks for dangerous corporate loans have hit an all-time high, according to Moody's, with 87% of all leveraged loans, one of the riskiest types of corporate debt, issued with covenant-like clauses. This means almost no protection for investors. The Trump economic miracle was bogus, nothing more than a debt fueled the mega bubble. He didn't help improve the health or efficiency of the real economy at all. Maybe no president could have. You can't taper a Ponzi. As long as there is fiat debt-based currency at the center of the economy, it will be nothing but bubbles. The Federal Reserve System is itself a bubble. The Fed will soon double its repo operation and extend it indefinitely. Mass bailouts and government-backed loans are coming. All a game. We the people lose. Everything is going to crash. Once the jobless domino falls, it's over. Banks will have to tighten their belts soon since they are losing all these dollars in investments. And if banks stop making loans, the money supply shrinks, and so does our economy. Bank loans stimulate our economy. Withholding loans will once again collapse it. Look at any chart of the world's big banks. This is the root of all our present and future woes. Swollen bank balance sheets. Fattened on everything they could dish up, home equity loans, reverse mortgages, cheap investment loans, forever driving up the property markets, the share markets, and the bond markets, creating ever more debt on a self-perpetuating and fattening asset bubble fever. Encouraged along by corrupt politicians. Rules issued by the bank's lobbyists set in place by our lawmakers, too complicated for a distracted population to ever understand. Just a cursory look at any of the share registries of these banks and all our largest companies, and you will see the same major shareholders, HSBC, JP Morgan, etc. fronts for unseen entities, hidden from investigations by a mirage of blind trusts and addresses that fade into the nether. An occasional glimpse is seen now and then with leaks such as the Paradise Papers. But, as usual, nothing to see here, move along. Where to from here now that the households are tapped out with debt that remains even as the assets depreciate? In the future, we must go to derive even more debt. We have over-mortgaged the children with house loans they can barely afford now let's mortgage the grandchildren. How, you might ask. Simple. Just prime up the government, and they will borrow into oblivion. Deficits as far as the eye can see are coming. Spend, spend, and spend, debt upon debt forever to be owed even as the purchases become worthless. The slaves will have to work harder to pay this mountain down for generations to come.
Those superyachts in the Caymans will gather for a toast. Stimulus means robbing disciplined, responsible people and giving it to recklessly deadbeats. Furthermore, tax cuts without spending cuts just mean more debt. Repo is the band-aid that will get ripped off when the collateral impairs to defaults everywhere you look. Start with travel airline, bus, semi-fleets, Amazon not delivering, and so on throughout the economy. This is just the beginning. This virus is not going away. It reinfects. It recirculates, and subsequent infections are worse than the initial infection. China has not gone back to work. They are simply living with this virus. The commies lie to protect their power. The only way out is a vaccine. That's it. A vaccine is at least six to eight months away minimum. In the meantime, expect a complete standstill of economic activity. According to experts, supply chains from Asia are not even due to begin breaking down before the third week of March. So this is just the beginning. I forecast a 75% drop in the markets. That's the minimum. The government can't cure a virus by throwing money at it. Governments are a bunch of stupid idiots. Gold is starting to move. They are close to losing control. The good news is that the media and politicians are the high-risk groups. $16 billion notional gold sold through the paper markets this morning. This virus is just the excuse the Federal Reserve banks around the world needed to crash the markets. If people finally figure out paper gold is worthless and run on the real physical, you can bet gold will go through the roof and beyond. So far, it's all still weighed down with paper. Be patient and hang on. Gold is going to $5,000. Silver hasn't even moved yet. But I get the feeling it's coming sooner than later. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you.